It seems to me that there's something absolutely central that the life we lead is actually determined to some extent by the kind of creatures we think that we are. That's what it is to lead a life rather than merely act out a biological prescription. I think that's something absolutely central. And where do we get that sense of who or what we are from? We get it from the community of minds. So we have to recognize there is something absolutely central about the community of minds, which is not implanted in a particular brain, that actually shapes the kind of uh, persons that we are. And that's why the brain and the vat experiment, one of the many reasons thought experiment doesn't work. The first is you have to assume that somebody has put the brain in the vat, that there is an outside world of people creating this kind of situation. So whereas it presupposes the very things, the outside world, that the brain and vat experiment plays with suspending. But the other, uh, other thing is that, yes, you could indeed get experiences from stimulating the brain. And let me give you some very striking example from the Canadian neurosurgeon Wilder Penfield. He was operating on patients who had epilepsy. In order to make sure that he wasn't damaging important parts of the brain, he would stimulate the brain while the patients were awake and they could report their sensations. And some patients, when he stimulated them, actually had quite complex memories. And you may think that rather goes against the case that Marcus and I have made against the, bra against the notion that the brain is a sufficient condition of experience. No, it doesn't. These were waking patients, so already wakefulness was present, and they'd had those memories in the normal way, first of all. So let me just end by reminding you about the difference between a necessary and sufficient condition. We're talking about London. In order to be knocked down by a bus in London, I have to be in London. I'm very pleased to say that that's not a sufficient condition of my being knocked down by a bus in London, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't be talking to you today. Yeah. That's fine, but I want to... <laughs> <laughs> Surely that's true. Exactly. Uh, let, but, but, but I want to press you a little bit on this idea of um, not being a single brain, because even, even if we're not wedded to the idea of brains and vats, there's a lot of social neuroscience going on now where people are interested in the effect of one brain on another. Mm -hmm. they, they, are you going to feel pain differently if you're aware of another person present? What about a group of people? Can that influence the physiological and uh, uh, mental states of people in a way that's to do with their nervous system. So, I mean, I, I can see one might be against a certain kind of individualism, but, but have you got the wrong target in thinking the only uh, target here would be a brain in a vat? There's something more distributed, more social, that might sustain some of the things you're talking about. Much more distributed. One of the irritating things you find is the toothache settles down when you go to the dentist. And that's a very good example of the kind of thing you're talking about. Certainly the toothache matters less. But hang on, why does it matter less? There's a whole institution of the reassurance that we get from people who've been qualified as dentists, etc., etc. And you can already realize that the authority of the dentist and your reassurance comes from an extraordinarily complex society. The society that I've described as being put together out of a trillion cognitive handshakes. We still need our brains, of course, it's a final common pathway, but what our brains are tapping into is something that has been built up over hundreds, thousands of years. And that's the culture that you can't find by looking at the brain. I repeat the metaphor I gave it towards the end of my little talk, trying to look at the brain and finding things like love and wisdom and so on, uh, and it, it's a bit like listening to the acorn through a stethoscope and hoping to hear the whispering woods. The community of minds is absolutely central to what it is to be a human being, and that is not to be found inside an individual brain. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.